back to the studio. I'm Matt Coleman uh, here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and we're digging back in the stacks. We're getting into some of my old work and seeing what we pull out of there. We just got through uh, my last video. Uh, we finished up the first portfolio that I pulled out. We got through all the pieces, pulled them all out, and uh, now we're moving on, and there's some stacks just sitting in the corners over here. You can see off screen there. We're just gonna start pulling out of there and see what I have leaned up in the corner. Let's get to it. All right. Yeah, this is a this isn't a bad little piece. It's in this salvage frame. I was really almost kind of into doing that at the time, like just using these found frames because uh. I mean, while this is like a reasonably nicely rendered drawing and stuff, like I put good work into it, but it's a, uh, I almost felt like putting it in too austere of a frame would make it a little too joyless or something. They're meant to be kind of like playful. This is a real like patchwork montage drawing here. Where I'm just kind of doing, I'm just playing basically on the picture plan. I really like this area down here. That's pretty cool. How just like everything gets visually integrated together. Yeah, but this is a a lot of this imagery, all of this imagery is from uh, New York. And I started doing this type of work a lot when I was there for a summer in 2008. Uh, I carried my sketchbook everywhere with me. I got a very large amount of sketchbook work that I did there. I did a small series of prints while I was there. And uh, this was something I made when I got back. I was I took a lot of uh, photography, source photos of everything. I took several rolls of film and I had a digital camera too. I, I'm sure I've got lots of digital photos from that era also. But uh, So this would have been me like cycling back through stacks of photos that I had taken there and just pulling out little elements and like kind of just montaging them together into this like jumble thing because this kind of like I mean if you go through New York I'm sure most people have at least been there uh, it's just like a lot of stuff being thrown at you all the time just like this it's like a wandering through a ever-changing landscape that always kind of like has the same elements being repeated but like combined in different ways and it just feels endless and so just like kind of like this everything kind of forms together into like this new thing and I'm like taking you know sections of signage there's signs all over the place everything's trying to get your attention I included this uh, bridge by Roosevelt Island because uh, I'm pretty sure that was the first time that I went to Roosevelt Island was during that visit, I had enough time to like make it to all these kind of out of the way places. Roosevelt Island is out of out of the way enough that it's not just a simple thing to jump over to. Like you got to put a little effort into getting there because there's not a lot there, and that's why I thought it was cool. Like um, they've actually kind of messed it up now. They put like a park down on the southern point. It used to just be like grass fields, and it would just like stop. There was like this kind of wooden dock thing that went down to the water of the East River and then it was done and now like they put this you know they've engineered everything there's cement you know there's a statue of FDR there or something and I mean that's cool too but it's not just like having an abandoned like grass field that you can wander through in the middle of the East River and there's like a there's an old building there. It's like an old sanitarium or something from like the days where they'd have to quarantine like typhoid fever patients or something. But it was the the roof is all gone from it, and uh, it just looks like this forgotten ruined castle or something. And there's like trees growing up out of it. It's all fenced off. Like I wouldn't I wouldn't go near it at all. I think it's probably was about getting ready to fall over at the time and might have already fallen over now. But what I thought was really cool about the southern point of Roosevelt Island was uh, just like the Manhattan skyline's right there. Like, it's in your face. 
but you're just wandering through like and you feel like you're back in the fields of Kansas for me like you know you're just like got grass up to your chest and it's like nobody's around and it was a very surreal experience and very interesting you know just to find this little corner that you're the only one that's paying attention to it like I didn't see anybody else down there and uh there's probably a few more people around there now that they turn it into a park and stuff yeah one thing that really gets lost in here and I, it's so lost like I didn't even think to talk about it I was like this little strip here that's how this piece started it was a I had this is a screen print so this would have been a blank piece of paper and I just dropped that screen print right in the middle there and I was like I'll do something else with it later you know and uh I've got several, I've had several pieces. I don't know if I have a whole lot of them anymore. Most of them have either been given to people or sold. But this uh, image was some houses near where I grew up in Kansas. It's like, you know, pretty standard urban sprawl, suburban sprawl thing going on. And I guess I was just going for some kind of juxtaposition of that versus like the city. I guess, may, I guess I put a lot of effort into making all the city aspects look a lot more interesting and a lot more lively, a lot more vibrant. And this is just kind of like a dead space almost. And uh, it might work better if I didn't have this edge there. That was just like, you know, a restriction that I put on it based on I printed some of them on the edge and I probably had like an original use for this thing that I can't remember really, but this was like this sheet of paper would have just been an extra runoff where I was like, oh, I'm just gonna, I got this screen print stencil going, I'm just gonna put it on some paper and do something else with it later. And it's not like a huge problem for me, but probably could have worked it in there a little bit better if I had like really planned out how to use that screen print imagery a little bit more. But like I said, I was really into, you know, salvaging things at the time too, and uh, just kind of happenstance juxtaposition just like this frame you know it's got this like this frame is really almost kind of part of the piece at this point like it's got this kind of floral decorative thing going on it's really kind of unusual and I like it I think it gives it a lot of character so here we have um, another work from Roughly the same era. I think I might have done this in 2011, actually, though. And that other one would have been done before. There was a period of time where I was in journalism school. Uh, I got my master's in that. That ran from 2009 to 2011. And because I was busy with that, I didn't make any artwork at all. And so there's a distinct uh, break in time, either before or after that, that... Uh, gray area piece was definitely before pretty sure this was done after and I would have done this when I was living in Massachusetts I believe but on the same trying to pick up on the same idea that I was doing before this one's kind of interesting because it's a colored pencil on canvas and it gets kind of an interesting effect to it I was okay trying it once I didn't want to go back to it I think maybe I drew this grid on there in pencil because that mimicked the uh, moleskin sketchbook pattern that I had in my New York sketchbooks and that had come to like almost be part of the aesthetic with a lot of my drawings like I was really into like how a lot of those sketches came out and that grid was just kind of ever present in there and I decided to intentionally put it into this one I think it adds quite a bit to it actually because uh, you don't try to read these buildings as like total representations of buildings it, it looks more like a drawing of buildings which they are but even more so because it's got this other information on there that's really breaking that pictorial plane from being just like really representational. I'm not totally sure what the thought process was on like, I went in and like painted over some of these areas to block it out. I can see I was like kind of playing with 
these structures kind of breaking down into abstraction and things, but uh, like this was made, you know, probably 10 years ago. Can't speak too specifically about like where my thoughts were at at this time, but uh, I was definitely starting to think about like built space as not just being static objects that built space is something that's in constant motion like we're you're either maintaining it you're constructing it you're destroying it it's in constant flux if it's not it's never it's never standing still you know and the cities that we live in are just like constant negotiations with each other and with our environment like we're working out our boundaries working out where things go and just kind of toying with that in a pictorial space, which in, you know, in visual art, there's a long history of abstraction and not non-representational. I'm kind of like bringing some of those elements playfully into there and seeing what, what happens when you do that. And if you follow the lineage of how my work develops over the years, uh, you'll see that I start to totally embrace the abstract elements and just drop all the representational stuff <laughs> all right and we got one more in that uh sort of same line of work this would have been done definitely in the 2011 2012 range right after i'd just gotten back to making work again after being out of it and in, in school for a while uh, yeah, same deal, just going through source photos and visually montaging things together, really intentionally like bringing abstraction into it more, really playing with the picture surface as like, you know, like I said, uh, drawing on other things that are happening in art, like abstraction and just injecting them into this space and being like, this is this could be both abstract and representational. Where's the line, you know, exactly. I also drew the, uh, that pencil grid in there again. I didn't realize I did that so much. One thing that's interesting is I used to draw in pen and ink a lot. This is like, that was something I picked up in, in high school. I was really drawn to Edward Gorey's drawings when I was in high school. That's probably like one of my earliest memories of being interested in art was Edward Gorey did the intro to mystery on PBS and they came on after like you know whatever show I was watching when I was like four years old or something and I was just so intrigued by these pen and ink drawings of this like series of things happening there was no no words or anything there's like some kind of ominous music and these kind of mysterious kind of dark noir scenes and images and then it after a minute it ended and the show was super boring so I turned it off and I was like what is this you know animation that I keep seeing this is cool and years later in high school I found out oh that was Edward Gorey and so I picked up pen and ink and I worked in that quite a bit like doing all this like cross hatching stuff and uh, really just kind of figuring it out on my own, pretty self-taught as far as drawing with ink and stuff. But this is probably about the time that I really got out of that too. I can't remember doing a lot of pen and ink work after this. I kind of just moved in a different direction. I know I started drawing in pencil a lot more once I moved away from Massachusetts. So this right here is... Uh, one of the last remnants of my pen and ink work. It's kind of interesting to think about there. This has got a pretty cool frame on it too. This is salvaged wood from a... I found this in my apartment in Chicago and cut it down on my saws and just popped it together. So this, this was like a really old board. It looked like it was some wood that was used to build the building like left over or something and the building was from the 1800s. So. It's got this really rough, there used to be some nails in it. Some water damage there, I don't know. I like the character brings it, it's pretty cool. <laughs>
This one has a title. Vision loss. Oh, I even dated it. 2013. Here I am guessing when I made it and I wrote it on there. I actually had the foresight to do that. 2013 is when this is from. So anyway, that's probably enough for today. Thanks for watching. Um, be sure to get at me on Twitter, Facebook, Summit Studios, MKE, uh, Instagram, I'm on there. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is giving out. Too much talking, not enough drinking. Foggy geezer. <sighs> yeah, check back next time. See you later. Thank you.